Hello, Rupa here from Crafters Corner. I'm back with another video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you an extended use of this silicone mat from Mod Podge. Uh, basically, you probably would be using this silicone mat for all your uh, gluing purposes and for using the uh, melt, Modge melts and for all those sticky kind of issues in order to avoid your platform from getting dirty and sticky. Well, today I am going to show you another use for this Modge melt silicon mat it's uh, larger than your a4 size paper a nice size and i'm going to show you a technique which is called mono printing uh, you must have heard of the term jelly printing where you have the jelly plate and then you apply paints with brayers and then you create your own uh, prints using stencils and any kind of textures that you can do well the same thing is what i'm going to incorporate on this silicon mat it's not an original idea from me. I'm very, very thankful to my friend Suman who enlightened me about this and then gave me a spark on this idea about using the silicon mat as such as a jelly plate. So thank you Suman for this idea. This video is yours. So I have with me the silicon mat and then I have a brayer and then I have uh, taken all the multi-surface paints that I have with me. You can use your acrylic paints, your fluid acrylics any kind of paints here for this technique and yes the main thing is the upcycling thing and I'm going to upcycle uh, I don't know I think this probably was a jewelry box so it's got the silver kind of uh, fabric on top of it and I want to give this a makeover and probably this can become a nice uh, jewelry box so let's see how this box gets transformed so as for the mono printing like I said we need some acrylic colors and what I have done is I have cut a small uh, piece from a pattern paper which is going to form the center of this box and I want to work around print. So once I do the mono printing, I am going to show you another technique related to decoupage. So to start with, it's mono printing using the silicone mat. So I am going to use complementary colors for this piece. So I am going to keep this as a reference on to on my table beside me and then work with colors so you can play like i said with any acrylic colors or fluid acrylics that you have i'm using the multi-surface paints that's with me i'm going to start with a lighter color and then build up and you need some blank a4 sheets on which you can transfer your print and let's start i want a base color which is a little neutral which is kind of blending with the background of this color so i'm going to use a nice uh, beige kind of color so you just need a few drops of the paint if you think the paint is too thick you can add a bit of water so i'm going to layer the paint on the mat and let's say i want a bit of this is kind of yellow ochre I'll just add a bit of brighter yellow to this and of course you can create textures with stencils and all that and then you use the brayer to smoothen out the paint like the fine visible and in camera so the brayer itself gives a lovely texture so once the paint is spread out there is no substitute to a lay, uh, brayer here you need to have a brayer with you this helps in smoothening out the paint evenly okay so the excess i'm gonna wipe off on book and then i just want to create some patterns so i have this squeezy comb which is also from plaid what i'm going to do is just create some random textures here okay and then Take your A4 sheet and then press it down. So this is going to be my first layer of print. I am showing you with monochrome colors, colors of the same family. You could do 2-3 colors 
So I want to build up layers. So let's see what comes out here. And what comes out is a beautiful print here. Very much distressed in the kind that I would like. Now, if I want to play up with colors, now I, I move on to the next darker color. I could probably use some greens and blues which can come. So, I have the green color here with me. I'm going to apply the green color on the mat. A little bit of residue of the previous color is absolutely fine. Let me see if I can bring in some little blue also here. So these kind of mono prints that you use make excellent backgrounds for your mixed media, for your art journaling and of course for the technique that I am going to show you which I am not going to reveal right now. Okay, so I have a bit of blue here. And yes, you have to be prepared for some mess. Messy play is all that I can think of when it comes to paints. Let me take the brayer and yes, let's smoothen out this green and blue. I like the combination here, the green and the blue. So it depends of how many layers you want to build up, two layers, three layers. You need to be careful about the color mixing. You can't end up having a muddy color. So I have the green and the blue spread here. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to lay a big stencil, a large one, and then take another A4 sheet and then take the print off. So whatever is the stenciled area that's going to be picked off from the mat. I remove the stencil and if you can see closely what you're left with is a lovely pattern here. I'm going to take the yellow paper again, the same paper and then press it down on this. So are you ready to see what's coming off now? So we have a base layer of yellow. I'm building another layer with blue and green with a stenciled pattern on it and what comes off here is another beautiful print so this kind of complements in my opinion this complements it's brightening up this so I think I'll stop with this but however I will show you a few more where you can Use the squeezy tool and then make other colored pattern paper. So this is definitely a custom made pattern paper to your choice. Right Now you can use this paper as you wish on your art journals or like I said as a mixed media background or for the technique that I am going to show you after this. So let's do one more uh, mono printing here. And this squeezy tool is again available with plate at uh, Crafter's Corner. So you have this white toothed one and then you have the narrow ones and then you have the plain scraping here which gives a nice distressed look once you apply the paint and then scrape it it gives you a very distressed background let's try that okay so i have a nice pink shade here for all you pink lovers i'm most of the time doing tones that fancy me yellows and browns so let's do some pink here so that's going to be my base color now pink it's not exactly pink it's called pink melon so once I apply that I'm smoothing it off with the brayer a brayer ensures a nice smooth even application of the paint so let's take the squeezy tool again and I'm going to do um, check pattern this time 
so we have horizontal lines and then now I'm going to do some vertical lines yes it's pink on pink it's going to be very difficult for you to catch the pattern but then what's the camera for let me get closer here I hope you can see the lovely checks that's getting formed here more so visible when I take it out on the A4 sheet so that's my first layer of printing this is regular printer paper and there you go there comes my first print here isn't that lovely look at this pink well it's also picked up colors that are left over in the mat that's the beauty of it gives a nice distressed look so what can we do with the next layer let me go to some totally contrasting ones maybe we could use a little bit of orange and teal so let me squeeze out some orange and bring in some If you have an unused ball pin, well, you could use to, you can use it to wiggle out some patterns on this. Let's say I make some circular patterns here. So this is basically removing the paint from that area. So you can use stencils, you can use the squeezy comb, you can also use stamps. Let me bring out a stamp. I'm going to use a stamp to pick off some paints here and there. And what you take off, you don't have to waste. You can use a rough book like this and then go about using that. So that this page now becomes a background for your future project. So, okay, so I have done some wiggly patterns and I have stamped something. So let's. I'm using the pink paper now. I'm going to give it a good press. So the number of layers that you want to build up is totally your call. I'm just showing you how your silicone mat is more than just a mat. Wow. Look at that. Can you see the shades of green orange pink yeah the teal is somewhere lost but then yes i can see it here and there and you can see the wiggly pattern here the circles okay and then a bit of the stamping in this area so you could stop at this place and then yeah you could do up some building with your mixed media inks and all that and then build up some layers with stamping or so on so this is basically to tell you how we are craft mat can be used and yes of course to clean your mat is very easy it's a silicone mat so what i'm going to do is just spread some water and then take some rag cloth or unused tissue and then wipe it off and my mat is clean So now there's more than one use for your silicon mat. It's your printing press right now. So let your imagination run wild. Take out a brayer. Take out some plain white sheets and go about making your own customized pattern paper in color choices of your own, designs of your own. And get creative as to how you can use those backgrounds now. So yeah, my mat is clean now. So do give this technique a try. Now I'm going to show you how this customized pattern paper can be used. So I have this print with me and I have this pattern paper with me. And I feel I can highlight a little bit of this violet here. So what I'm going to do is take some archival inks. These mini archival inks are also available at Crafter's Corner. 
I see this lovely purple peeking out and this blue which I think can brighten up this so what I'm going to do is take this grip stamp you can use any stamps so I'm going to have a random stamping of this come on this is your own pattern papers so whatever you want to see on this well you don't want it to get too busy also I want this to highlight this pattern which is going to come in the center so I'm stopping with a little bit of script stamping and let's see how this purple is going to be or oh, should I do yeah I think purple is good that's brightening things up now well uh, you have your own 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 design pattern paper here I know it's very busy right now this is now how it's going to be presented you can imagine I'm gonna have this in the center if you think this is too bright for your standards well I'm happy with it so I'm stopping here nevertheless I'm going to add a few color splats to make it a little more distressed so what I here very little and then make it a bit watery take a brush and then do some splats here you know you can't see much I'm also going to add some black color splats to the same it's to dry now as it is the mono printing would have dried very fast because it's a very thin layer when you do it with the uh, brayer but this watery paint needs to dry so I'm going to let it dry on the side and meanwhile show you let's start off with the next technique so you learn today how to make your own customized pattern paper here comes my recycled box I'm going to retain the base as it is it's going to be the same maroon color and this is going to come here and I'm going to have those pattern chips coming here so what we're going to do today is four tile technique or you could say a four mosaic tile technique whatever you want to call so I'm going to create small chips right now and going to give it the glossy look of a tile which is obviously four it's not the real tile a clean OHP sheet need a cl clean OHP sheet and of course our good old Mod Podge and a clean brush so the technique that we are going to do is for tile take out your Mod Podge I have a clean brush here so what I'm going to do is apply a thin layer of Mod Podge over the OHP sheet So here's the Mod Podge on the OHP sheet and I'm going to have a thin layer up on the pattern paper also on the right side of the pattern paper. And it goes face down onto the OHP sheet. There you go that's my pattern paper up on the OHP sheet I'm going to do the same thing to the A4 sheet now I'm applying this side this is an A3 OHP sheet so I can easily accommodate a A4 sheet on this side so I have this thin layer of Mod Podge on the OHP sheet. I'm going to have a thin layer up on the mono print that I did. And then smoothen it out. Be careful. 
you want the paper pattern paper or your printer paper to adhere well to the OHP sheet and mind you it should be a nice clean OHP sheet okay, so this is going to take a while to dry now I'm going to spread it out this will dry transparent pattern paper and the monoprint paper so you can see the gloss effect because of the OHP sheet the Mod Podge is dry it's a thin uh, layer now so what I'm going to do now is center this print here which will be a mosaic piece which will be cut into four we're going to create the four illusion of a mosaic here and then I'm going to come back to you with cutting this paper into one inch chips okay so give me time to do that I have cut the uh, pattern paper the printed paper rather into one inch chips here you can see the glossy coating of the OHP on top so here I have the uh, chips and then I'm going to cut this one into four okay So I have this pattern paper also cut into four and I have my one inch chips. So what I'm going to do next is apply a nice liberal coat of Mod Podge on top of this and then start adhering the puzzle. Yeah, you can call it a puzzle now. Okay, so I have the first piece. Yes, clean fingers a must. I don't want any Mod Podge marks here. And I'll give a slight gap. This is the paw tile look. Okay, so look at the missing pieces now. Okay, and as you know, the Mod Podge is going to dry clear, so it doesn't matter the excess Mod Podge oozing over. So I'm going to stick these chips to one by one. Let me start with this side. It's always a great feeling to upcycle any old box and to totally change its look. Okay, now that this is a real puzzle. So you can just go about doing it the way you want random squares I'm again leaving a small gap so basically filling up the gaps here so it's paper on the back side which is going to adhere really well to the Mod Podge try to maintain uniform gaps so let me finish solving this puzzle and I'll come back to show you how this looks. Okay, so I'm going to have the final pieces of the puzzle being solved now. I'm adhering the last few pieces. A very simple way a different way to do up your decoupaged projects now so you have the OHP coating on top so there is no need for you to give a coat of varnish nice decorative look to any kind of box or any item that you want to do I'm going to wait for the Mod Podge to dry now yes it's still not giving the effect that I want once the Mod Podge dries this will level out and then look complete you can see the lovely gloss of the uh, OHP sheet here which gives you the tile look so let's wait for the Mod Podge to dry and then I'll come back and show you what the final product looks like I'm back here's my completed project I have done the fixing of the puzzle all the chips stuck together with Mod Podge and it's all dry as you can see I love the lovely gloss look on the top which gives it that kind of tile well this is actually the four tile look 
So give this technique a try. It's so easy to give any box a makeover. As you can see, the splitting of the picture, the entire picture into small pieces to give the fall look. And I managed to cut some small pieces in Adia here and to the spine. All right. And yes, for the inside of the box too, I did the same technique. I have uh, cut the pattern paper and then stuck on this side, giving again the four tile look. It's got the white piece sheet on top. And I've decided to use this as a nice jewelry box, maybe gift a nice set of jewelry to someone. So the box, which was once a plain old maroon box, now has a lovely pattern on top, well protected with the OHP, with a customized print. Just by using your silicone craft mat, a brayer, some acrylic paints or multi-surface paints and archival inks, stencils, and not to forget the squeezy tool, an amazing tool to give textures. Well, I've, this is just one type that I have shown you on the silicone mat. This comb can be used on wood with paints directly with your texture paste and many other things to give lovely patterns. So give the technique a try using the craft mat as a mono printing plate and also doing the four tile technique. I'm sure you'll enjoy this. So creating your own backgrounds is so, so easy now using a silicone mat and some paints. I'll see you soon with another video tutorial. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and thank you so much for watching this. I'll come back soon. Bye-bye.